Welcome to The Cut, a series where I'm talking to experts about how small changes can have a big impact on patient outcomes after surgery. How, how did that make you feel as, as a patient? You, know, you, you, trust, you trust these people and how did it make you feel? It made me, made me feel not trusting doctors anymore, I'm afraid. Um, I'm trying to not go into hospital at all, mm. um, but anything can happen, so you, you're bound to go to hospital. But I feel like I have to ask every question now to a GP, a, a specialist. Um, it traumatised me because then when they took the object out of me, and it came to surface, um, he said, um, Diane was sorry about this, but anyhow, he said, wait till we hear from the lab. And I went, okay. And about three days after that, I was feeling unwell. My mm -hmm. tummy was bloating. Mm -hmm. The seroma had arrived again because the first sign of seroma that I had was when that first operation, when I had the port removed from the beginning, mm -hmm. which was May the 28th. Yeah. Now, when that gush of water had came out, that was, hey, that was seroma. Now it's an abscess. Yeah. From an abscess, she had to be cut open again. Cut open again, then got the object out. Got the object out because it came to surface and she found it, no one else found it. And then after that, I ended up having to go private. Mm. So I went into private emergency again because of seroma sitting on 118, I think I was sitting very high. Mm. I had, the infection was very, very high. Tell me about this wound doctor. This wound doctor, I could kiss their feet. She's a god because she said, we're going to put you on the fact machine. And we're going to take any infection or anything that's inside you and you're going to have to wear it for about two weeks and this is our only solution and it will work and she did say to me well you've been traumatized you've been through a lot and i have had i said well i've had four operations in seven months it's a lot she, diana mm. that is a lot i mean every day when i undress and dress this cut reminds me every day of what I've gone through. Um, I had not exercised for at least two years where I used to do the track eight, nine kilometers, mm. as fit as anything. But because of the operation with doctor and the wound doctor, now he said to me, my hernia muscle, because it's been through a lot, it had collapsed and he stitched it as tight as he can. And of course, I was too scared to pick up my grandkids. I was too scared to even exercise, too scared to do anything. So my husband was doing all the chores around the house. Mm -hmm. um, he was doing everything. And, and all I did was just go to work and doing light duties after about a month. And they were very understanding because it was a very good company that I worked for. Uh, but at the end of the day, I really feel in my heart I feel like I can't trust doctors. Mm. I feel that even if my grandkids were to go to any doctors, um, and I know they're good, and I know we've got good doctors, mm. but I feel like I have to ask every question, especially what I've been through. Um, but life goes on and I've got to try and keep going on, but it always reminds me yeah. what I've been through. So it's that. It's not only the physical reminder, it's the mental reminder of, it's a traumatic experience, what you've been through. Mm. And when you came across the wound doctor, that nurse wound practitioner who kind of scooped you up and took her under, your, under her wings and said, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to heal you, mm -hmm. how long it's going to take. How did you feel? She was accurate. It was about two weeks and it was closing. That's a great sign. Yeah, and I had the care people coming from the hospital mm -hmm. 
to change my uh, gauzes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they were coming twice a week. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, she did say, you've been through a lot, you've been traumatized. Is there anything happening? I said, well, yes, I've, I've, from the word go, I've addressed this to the medical board from day one. I was writing to the hospital from day one, midnight on my phone. Mm. And from the word go, the coordinators of number one hospital, mm. you know what they said to me? They said to me, next time you should come in, we'll give you the best care ever. You'll be on top of the list and we'll take extra care. Now I'm paying top hospital cover. Mm. I should have been cared for from the word go. Mm. And I didn't at all. The only time I was cared for was the fourth operation. Mm. And she said, what, what has happened? What are you going to do? I says, well, I've taken it further. I've rung my uh, insurance and they were actually, oh, we're already doing an integrity investigation on this one particular doctor. Mm. Mm. And of course they were, but it, the feedback I didn't get back from them. They said, now you, you deal with it with the medical board. Mm. And the medical board had answered me with a letter saying that the doctor had not, not even inserted the mesh or the cotton inside me. Well, then I said to myself, well, who did? How did I get this aroma? And I just feel I could have died. That's how I feel. So I don't feel that security with doctors at all, unless I feel like I've got faith in particular ones like the, and the wound doctor. Yeah, they were, they were great. We need more of them because I heard there was only one wound doctor in the whole hospital. One only. Impossible. Why? Why wound doctor? And why is it they put me on the active, active act machine? Mm -hmm. Um, the last minute, why don't they do that from the word go? But then if they did, I don't know whether that would have come to surface, the cotton, I'm not too sure. I question it all the time. Mm. I said to myself, well, if she put me on the vac machine, but I, I found the cotton prior to that, would the vac machine had brought it to surface? I question it. Mm. So I don't know. Only probably the wound doctor will know that. She'd be able to answer that for sure. Yeah. Mm. What an experience and it's it's clear to see your resilience and your strength mm. and your um, persistence in, in getting the truth for your lived experience and it's so important. And yeah. There's so many others there that, that have been through similar experiences. So you're speaking for many in, in some cases. I think what's interesting is that you received um, that specialised level of care when you came across the wound specialist mm. and it's an expert in the field which is really good to hear. Yeah. Tell me how was life during that time when you would finally had a consultation with the wound doctor, had a plan of action, we're going to use this dressing Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's um, it's an interesting choice of dressings because it has a device attached to it. Yeah. It can be cumbersome or it can be quite discreet. Tell me how that care plan impacted your life from there on in, in terms of being able to return to work, how you felt in your physical appearance and, and how you felt um, in terms of your state of mind and your mood. My state of mind was not the best, mm. I'll be honest with you, uh, because when I have clients come in, uh, they're either a nurse and I recommend them to certain um, oils and to keep them hydrated while doing shift work and whatever and moisturisers. And then I'll say, oh, where do you work? And they'll tell me. And then I'll say to them, oh, okay. I says, oh. I had a bad time and I will always bring it up about my experience. I went, no, I go, yes, I had a foreign object inside me. So I do, I was always bringing it up and I still bring it up till today. And mm. um, so my mental being that way, it's always there. Yes. It's like never forgotten. 
um, and I was trying to get back on track doing my physical side of it, mental side of it, and it's only now that I've started doing that. It's taken me this long, and I'm only doing that. I'm only doing like a three kilometer walk. I'm too scared to exert my body to even try and go further because I don't want to. I don't want to traumatize my body in the sense having a hernia or my muscle collapse. I'm too, I'm afraid picking my grandkids. I'll carry the lightest one, uh, but I hug all the others. But that's it. I'm too scared to pick them up or pick anything too heavy. And that's two years after the initial yeah. surgery. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, with the seroma, I lost my two thumbnails. It went, they went both purple. I've mm -hmm. lost both nails. I have artificial nails mm -hmm. in my thumb because they went both purple. And I can't understand why mm -hmm. my fingernails never went purple, just my thumbs. I couldn't work that out. And, um, yeah, so I've been traumatised that way as well. It's, yeah, it's a really traumatic experience. Mm. There's no doubt about it. Um, and I think sort of what your situation shows is that sometimes our healthcare system is, is fractured and siloed and there's no um, connection between healthcare services. That's not for all hospitals and healthcare yeah. services, but for some. And wound care in itself is, is, is its own discipline. I think we need more of those, don't we? We need more wound doctors to help the heal um, as like an aftercare after you've been out of hospital, yeah. um, knowing exactly what they're talking about. We don't have enough of them. I agree totally. Um, because I had a lot of faith in her. She was very direct, very straightforward, but we're going to deal with this. We're going to do it and we're going to get rid of it and you're not going to get the infection ever again. And she was right. She yeah. was right. So I had a lot of faith in her. And and I every person that came, is it the care team at my house? That's right. I said, that woman is incredible. It took her to give me the anti-vac machine. Yeah to cure me and why didn't they do this from just the word go mm. Mm. what a great story you've you've come out the other end and you're you're on your 3k yes 3K. you're getting closer to that 9k and i know that you will get there yeah and it's so important that your story is shared to let others know that they're not alone and that don't give up keep yeah. seeking Keep getting the right advice. Find that person that you connect with. Mm -hmm. So you connected with that wound care nurse mm -hmm. and she took you, took care of you, made sure you healed and understand or understood the experience you'd been through, but put you at the centre. Yeah. yeah. Made it patient-centric mm -hmm. and made sure that your healing could commence not only your biological physical healing but your mental and well-being yeah is so important because it impacts it impacts healing yeah well what i couldn't understand though carly i'll ask you one question mm. is why is it the medical board and doctors um coincide with each other and stick by each other because the letter that i had got from the medical board um, was very direct and they coincided more on the doctor's side than my side as a patient. And I knew I had no hope, so I didn't continue. So that's why I decided then to act. I think that receiving feedback like that could be quite debilitating, not mm -hmm. only having the experience as the patient and you're living that trauma Mm. over and over again but to start experiencing loss of hope and despair mm. is probably what has impinged your healing as well mm -hmm. like it's slowed it down mm -hmm. and I think you being your best advocate 
and seeking the truth and, and mm. getting resolution is part of that healing process mm. and continuing on that journey. It's that you need those answers. You need to be able to do that. Just like yeah. you needed to find the right wound care specialist yeah. to help in healing your wound. Mm. And as you said, with me going to work and what have you, uh, and me talking to certain people and and this one other particular person had said to me that that one particular doctor was dismissed from that one particular hospital and he went to another hospital due to being money hungry. Now that is sad um, because even as I said, this doctor just takes you through and counts the dollar mm. and that's all he does. Um, and this is why now he's at this other particular doctor, uh, other particular hospital, sorry, and not at the other hospital. It's not to be seen there again. Interesting. So it's very interesting and it's made me think, well, you've done this to me. Now you're going to have to look after me in the sense what I've been through. Mm. Uh, but at the end of the day, I just hope that... Um, I'm speaking for a lot of people. I believe in speaking for my rise. And yes, there are magnificent doctors and wound doctors, and we just need more of them. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for sharing your journey, your experience, just a snapshot into what's happened to you and your surgical journey. And it's so important that we understand this as scientists and clinicians and doctors and surgeons, because at the end of the day, it's about you and the best outcomes for you. So it's been a privilege uh, for me to hear your story and thank you for your time, Diana. Thank you, Kylie. Get on to that 9K. Yeah, I, I know <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Kylie.